there we go. What's up everyone, my name is SWAT Director. Welcome back. We are at the first episode of my One Man Dub of Ace Attorney. Um, if you don't remember, a One Man Dub is basically just a fan dub, but only one person does it. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so that's the first thing, don't ask to be in the series, it's a One Man Dub. Secondly, um, I won't be able to reach out a ton, but during parts like this, I'll be able to reach out. Uh, welcome, Vinny. Welcome, Kaiser. Welcome, Ashton. Um, welcome, everyone. Yeah, I'll reach out during breaks, um, and at the end, of course. But yeah, uh, mainly you'll get to hear my voice range, <laughs> which will be fun, and my voice will be dead afterwards, but let's not worry about that. <laughs> Alright, new game. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. OBJECTION! <laughs> yep. <laughs> OBJECTION! <laughs> yeah, um, okay, first thing we need to do, options, we need to keep the music on, turn off the sound effects, uh, single box skip, screen shake on, vibration off, text boxes, Yes. English. Uh, okay. There we go, guys. I will wait for that. Um, do you want to be a lawyer? Because you seem to like games where you play as a lawyer. I do want to be a lawyer. That's a good inference, Kaiser. Um, I do want to be a lawyer when I grow up. Um, I'm going to have to talk about that for a second. Specifically, I want to be a criminal litigator. Uh, a litigator is someone who does fight in trial. Because not all lawyers fight in trial. Um, obviously most people think of a lawyer or someone fighting trial, but that's a very specific type of lawyer. I'm going to be a criminal litigator as a defense attorney, just what Phoenix Wright is. Um, that's just a coincidence, I just like defending people. Um, yeah, so without further ado, who's hyped? Okay, we're just talking about how awesome the soundtracks in are in these games, you're gonna hear a lot of awesome music. Alright, here we go. Yeah, so I've played this game before. I've played every episode. Um, yeah, so I don't think I'm going to go into this blind. But please, guys, if anyone else has played this game, no spoilers. Um, Haha, <laughs> just like Saul Goodman, but mine is like... <laughs> better Call Saul. Alright, guys. Um, like I said, no spoilers. I mean, I've played this game the whole game before. I've played all, like, every single game. Uh, but nobody else that has played spoil it. Okay, here we go. Episode 1. The first turnabout. Oh. Oh. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I, I, I've gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right! Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of own my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! I knocked my camera over! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> I knocked my camera over. 
Oh, I've literally never done that before. How does that happen? I've been practicing these voices. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <clears> Hi, <throat> oh, answer me. Guys, uh, Fadius, I know you just showed up, so I'll give you a pass. Do not... Add okay, I'm going to make this a pin message. Um, I won't be able to answer while playing. So... Okay, there's that pin message. Um, yeah, Kaiser said it too. I only answer during breaks. I guess this is technically a break because I knocked my camera over. Oh my god, how do I knock my camera over like that? What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, that is so annoying. I knocked my camera over. Okay. Um, back to voicing. <clears throat> Death. Despair. Oh! I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Oh. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell him I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspaper say it was you. What evidence do I have? Okay. My attorney's badge, and I have her autopsy. Seven... Okay, I might want to take a note of the... God damn it, stop hitting your camera, Jordan! <laughs> Time of death. Four, four to five. Cause of death. Lots of blood. Four to five. I might want to take, keep an eye on that. The newspapers say it was you, Vinny. Fuck. <laughs> the newspapers say it was you, Larry. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually a butt. The Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I could say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And that and I own one, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. Like you did. And that's just about what I'm gonna do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court. Courtroom at number 2. <sighs> Uh, yeah, so this would be one of those breaks when we see a black screen and then, like, uh, these green texts is when I'm most likely going to be reading chat during voicing. Um, every fake depressed kid be like this. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yeah, yes, it is, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a, a little nervous. <laughs> your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to certain your readiness. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. No. And shaking, eyesight, fading, nah. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Hmm, I wonder who this is. <laughs> a defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report covered so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No! No way, I forgot! I'm drawing a blank here! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're ready to this? <laughs> 
You don't even know the victim's name! Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, uh, just forgot. Temporarily. <laughs> I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. This is a, this is a tutorial case. I already know this stuff. Mr. Wright, who is the victim? Cinder block. I really want to press cinder block. <laughs> no, it's Cindy Stone. Um, it's uh, the victim's name is Cindy Stone, Your Honor. Correct. Fucking <laughs> correct. Correct. No, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit by a doctor during the autopsy. She was struck once. She was. <clears throat> she was struck once by a blunt, by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why you should proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a, struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of a flanker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. A statue of the thinker. Added to it. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is your only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. You know, I really, every time they bring up, like, a new thing, I'm just gonna, uh, say it as if it was in real life. I'll stop saying R1 button. Because, <laughs> Kaiser, I just saw your message. Oh, yes, I remember the R1 button existing in real life. <laughs> yeah, same, man, I love it. Actually, it does exist. It's right there. <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Botts, to the stand. Um, fuck. <laughs> um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention, you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Mary gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem! Mr. Pike! <laughs> Sorry, it's just please. <laughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die, Larry? I wasn't dumped, she just wasn't taking my phone calls! Or seeing me! Ever! And what's it to you anyways? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. <laughs> According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The victim's passport? Cool. I gotta forgot this case. <laughs> Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes. Older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and it used it to support her lifestyle. My phone is watched. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong ways. Should I... Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof! Oof! I, I don't know what, what, what the wind saying sound. Wince. I was gonna say wince. Wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating sheep talk. 
that cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I just gotta drop dead. Yeah, and what I mean in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Larry, let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused mode was clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is no, not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh. Well, did you or did you not? Huh? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. <laughs> Uh, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, then, we'll just have to remind you. I've got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the apartment victim, the victim's apartment that day. <laughs> well, that simplifies matters a lot. Well, that simplifies matters a lot. Who was your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. Real bad. On the day... Fuck. <laughs> On the day of the murder, my witness is selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Larry be looking very guilty right now. He does look guilty. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. <laughs> Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling news subscriptions when I met a fleet in an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! <coughs> Fuck him. Oh man. Voice, coughing is a voice actor's worst fear. I have to redo everything. One well, my life, she said, as well. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. That man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Yeah, man looks too happy to be part of a murder case. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Dude, read the fucking record. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone, the phone Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your persuasal. Electricity, okay, noon to six, remember that. Now, Mr. Wright. Y yes. Y er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Yeah! H how do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record button. Open the court record, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Cross-examination witnesses count. Okay. I think it's kind of obvious what the contradiction is. It's, um, it's at the very last thing. I that's called. However, the phone. I'm going to tell exactly what it's going Yeah, hey, fuckhead. Um, <coughs> objection. Dumbass. The time of death was 4 p.m. 
I think this is kind of obvious. Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m.? You sure? Yes, yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. I find that, frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy report notes the death of the f f the 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 fuck. <laughs> I mess up, I don't do fuck too fuck, what the fuck? <clears throat> the autopsy notes the time of death is at some time of fuck. <laughs> How am I missing up this line? <clears throat> the autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, <clears throat> no, body, to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Ah. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Objection! This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sobers, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always forget more lies. She threw one, and the whole story falls apart. Thanks, man. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? <laughs> oh, I love this game. You see, when I found the bossy, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, uh, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. <sighs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Television my ass. Hmm, I see you had a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the Right, you know what to do. I got this one. Examination. I think we know what this one is too. <laughs> you see, when I found the body of the time, there was a voice in the time. But something about this isn't adding up. <laughs> this is, yeah. <laughs> I know that was like the last cross examination, but I don't care. <laughs> Maybe if <you've> <laughs> that man looks too happy to be part of a murder case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, you look really closely. Not that closely. That's the guy that killed her. <laughs> There's a voice. Uh, hey, fuckhead. There's a fucking blackout at that time. <laughs> Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it! <laughs> you couldn't have heard the television or video! There is someone at my door. Ignore my terrible dad scene. This music's fucking awesome. <laughs> Ugh! I, well, Eric, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Simon? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. <laughs> quite. <laughs> Ugh! Wait, wait, I remember now. Mr. Simon, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Ah! Oh, what my apologies, Your Honor. It's, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sound. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. When is testimony here in the time? Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. The defense might cross-examine the witness. I forgot to read. You saw a clock? Oh, that would explain the contradiction. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Cross-examination here in the time. Oh, that was a black owl. Good job, SWAT. Thanks, Hunter. <laughs> Let's just take a moment to appreciate the music. Okay, moment taken. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in front of me. Hold on a fucking second. 
I will say, I think this is, hmm. Well, we know it is a thatch, so. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Kane? As the witness stated, this statue is a dedical. What the fuck? I already knew that. <laughs> the neck is a switch. You just tilted it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a tape clock, after all. Well, Mr. Knight, it appears that the witness testimony was this is a clock. Do you have any problem with this? Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> Mr. Misa. Yeah, no, um, Kaiser, one thing you're gonna notice, every, oh, a lot of these names are puns. <laughs> yeah, I have a fucking problem. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered. I don't know why I'm making the movements. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... He went into the fucking apartment. <laughs> You're lying! That's not... That's not... Okay. Knew... He knew it's a clock because he... You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh, yeah? Prove it! Prove I went to that. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock. Then the sound of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue. Like Winston Payne is that, is the pun that says wince in pain, which is why he winced earlier. Mm -hmm. Please continue, Mr. Watt. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon just spoke just as you hit the victim. And that voice was burning in your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! What, 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 what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Did the witness count to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard. No, I mean, I saw. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it, it was him, I tell you. I saw him. He he killed her, and he should burn. Burn! Give him death. Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There, there is a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. White. Your Honor, you claim the sound of witness who came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawat heard was definitely his clock. A fact which is clear if you simply <laughs> ask the clock, ask the neighbors. Hey guys, is this a clock? Yeah. <laughs> We're just on the clock. Let's sound the clock here, now, in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Court? Mr. Pang, can you tell me what time it is now? It's, it's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Huh! <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? 
Yeah, this is it's trying to pull you away. You don't have to fucking prove that at all. If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Ugh. He's right. How am I supposed to go in and prove that? Damn it. So close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack critical evidence to support your claim. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you induct the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the I come all the way down here to test look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You loyals are all slime. Ugh. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Saw Not so fast, Mr. Sawit! Yeah, I mean, jeez. Listen up, Wright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the side of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason to fly the clock with the other stuff? Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, court record. Is it this passport? Because oh, it wouldn't be the... That part turns back. Um, it wouldn't be the autopsy. That wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't be the murder weapon. And the blackout doesn't do anything. Because it's a tablecloth. And we can't present the clock itself, because there's no way that anyone would set a clock. So yeah, it would have to be the passport. So, yes? Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock is already running slow in the day. The blackout may have set the clock. Oh, yeah! Oh, God, I played this before. What happened? Have you found evidence? Prove his claim. Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can't prove my claim beyond a doubt. Huh. Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock is on this. Okay, uh, the blackout, maybe, because I might have slowed the clock down. But it's a table clock, right? And it's still going slow. Um, and if we were to prove that it was slow on the day of the murder, uh, it wouldn't be... Because the blackout was still going on at that time, so we would have... I'm taking a shot in the dark. Take that! The victim has just returned home from abroad that I was right. Day before the murder. Mm -hmm. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her and dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit, or should I say, Mr. Did It? Order, 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 I say. Oh, that makes sense. Well, this case certainly turned out different than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, er, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. We did it, ladies and gents. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Did he just die? No, he's not dead. Mm -hmm. It turns out that Frank Saul was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saul let himself in to do his dirty work.
While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawa grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and killed her. <laughs> August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. The butts always prevail. <laughs> Whew, I can't believe he still won. <laughs> right, good a job in there. Congratulations. But thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking so this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean bad. Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. <laughs> heh, um, heh, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Uh, yeah. Kaiser, Larry and the victim were dating. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her, one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a mem memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. A and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse, excuse me. I think she thought. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. No, you don't gotta sympathize with me, so okay? Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Is that right? Right. Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> what the heck is she talking about? I'm assuming it's a... I'm lost, man. What the hell do I show? Uh, guys, gotta help me out here. What the fuck do I show? <laughs> I never do these, this stuff, but it's hilarious. So I do want to do the right thing. Um, Passport? Well, she was in Paris. And she... Not because she... Statue? Uh, shot in the dark? Take that! Mm -hmm. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Whatever. She probably. <laughs> Look at a smile. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take with traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Yeah, no, it was the said. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? 
Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. Well, drink a toast to innocent pots. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Or, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. No, they're not dating, guys. And so my first child came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then, but that clock would be at the center of another murder. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Alright, everyone, that is the end of the first episode. Um, save your progress up to this point, Larry. <laughs> uh, we'll be saving it over to turn about sisters. <laughs> Alright, everyone, well, that is the first episode. Um, yeah. Uh, hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know, um, what your guys' thoughts on the dub were. Uh, let me read through the chats I missed. Wait, but why was Larry at home? Did he just die? The butts always forgot. Oh, that makes sense. It would fit in the time spin. Murder, Larry, Harry butts. Um, alright, guys, that will end. Uh, we'll do another one of these maybe tomorrow. Uh, definitely next week. Well, we sit play Turnabout Sisters. Back. Alright, and that's where we leave off. <laughs> See you guys.